My next guest joins me to give us an overview of reporting season. Conrad Song from Macro, welcome to you. Hi, thanks for having me again. Hey, Conrad. Look, give us, I guess, a little bit of an update reporting season. What, what are we seeing so far? Yeah, it's been really interesting. So most companies have either sort of met or exceeded expectations. Uh, you could probably put that down to, um, let's say, lower guidance and expectations being set by companies and analysts, um, obviously due to the, the COVID environment that we've been in. But we're, we're focusing on, I guess, that recent rapid expansion that we saw over the last couple of months. Um, the focus really, I think, for a lot of investors, uh, especially the institutions, however, is the outlook. Um, we want to look at what's going to, what, what are they seeing they're expecting. So uh, if you want to understand the price action of these companies, um, I, I think it's important to see that, um, you know, the, the general outlook is focused on this normalization of consumer behavior. Um, as we start to see vaccines being rolled out fairly successfully, um, you know, you're, you're seeing interesting things in the commodity price uh, or the commodity markets. Um, so I think looking forward, the thematic for us, um, I guess, with this reporting season, um, yeah, the outlook is very much more, you know, taking more waiting than we, when we had in the previous sessions. Well, I guess for companies that we haven't heard from yet, who are you expecting to be the key players there and report well? Yeah, we, we're, we're obviously covering a broad range of companies uh, in our universe. Um, to highlight a couple of names that are reporting shortly, so McMahon Holdings uh, is reporting uh, on the 23rd of this month. Uh, this, so the stock has historically had very low trading volume, extremely undervalued from a fundamental standpoint, from our perspective anyway. Um, now, MAH, which is a ticket code, so it's a leading mining service provider, um, and its clients are across Australia, New Zealand, Indonesia, Africa. Um, effectively, I, I guess the key points for us um, is that we expect strong half yearly results following the rally in the share price due to the revenues um, being highly uh, contract based. Um, so it provides sort of fundamental revenue recurring support. Um, the share price, again, like, like I said, oh, the, the share price is historically trading uh, within a very close range around that sort of 25 cent mark. Uh, so this is one of the, the sort of smaller cap businesses that we're looking at. Um, we're also looking at APE, Eagers Automotive. Uh, um, automotive sorry. So expected reporting date is the 24th uh, of this month. Um, now the automotive re uh, sort of retail company, um, whose activities sort of consist of sales of new and used uh, motor vehicles distribu uh, and distribution and sales parts um, is expected to do quite well. So they're coming out with their um, half yearly uh, reports, which again, we think the outlook is going to look strong. Um, January 2021 car sales figures were up 11% versus the previous corresponding period um, due to orders uh, being fulfilled, um, for which contracts have been signed mm -hmm. for the previous year to that. So. Um, yeah, they're, they're sort of two of the names that are reporting soon that we're pegging pretty pretty aggressively. Uh, something I like to talk about, Conrad, is wine. Now, Treasury Wine Estates, just a short time ago, soaring to its highest level in six months. What's driving this? Yeah, um, there's been a couple of things. So the report was actually really strong. So, I mean, when you take a look at TWE, um, you know, the big concern, not only for the business, but for the industry in, in general and wine was the massive uh, restrictions that China put um, on, on, on their exports. So 37% of their wines are actually exported to China. So it's a pretty big one for, for TWE. That being said, um, the well, ever since that kind of you know, uh, debacle, um, if you call it that, um, revenues, yeah, were down 22.5%. Profits were up 70% in the second half of the year compared to the first half of the year. So that's for FY20. Um, for us, we, you know, we like the numbers in terms of how they're performing considering the environment, but the industry is still very uncertain. You know, no one knows when these bans are going to be lifted. Sure, it might happen soon. It might happen, you know, eventually. But mm -hmm. um, in terms of the risk that we might sort of see in the short to medium term, for us, it's um, something that we're sort of just kind of steering away from just because of the, the, the whole Chinese Australian thing. Yeah, fair enough. And what about on a, on a global scale? Obviously, we're still hearing a lot of discussion. A massive play for the Biden administration is this stimulus. How is this affecting the market at the moment? Yeah, there's a, there's a few, I, I guess, key economic data points that I guess investors should be looking out for, not only, you know, with regards to the stimulus, but just, I guess, to touch on that. So stimulus uh, is expected. Um, you know, Biden needs to really follow through and not miss the mark here. Um, even by a cent. I mean, if he does, um, so it's at 1.9 trillion at the moment, you know, we will see markets 
um, you know, experienced a slight rattle due to that. Um, but um, I guess overall, you know, in terms of the other sort of key economic points that we're looking at, so Australia's unemployment rate decreased from uh, or to six point four percent down from six point six. So that's the fourth consecutive month um, that we've seen. Um, I, I guess that that come down, uh, which is which is obviously quite good. Um, also, just sort of again in relation to that stimulus, um, retail sales figures in the U.S. came out much better than effect, uh, uh, um, expected. Um, again, that kind of implies the benefits that you you can, I guess, expect from a stimulus check um, because we did see one in, in the U.S. in December. Um, and so we're, we're sort of seeing that flow on effect. So the stimulus is very much the key focus. Um, we also have um, uh, the, um, uh, the RBA um, coming out with their wage price index uh, on the 24th of Feb for quarter four. Um, so the RBA is targeting um, sort of wage growth between two to three percent. Uh, the outcome of these figures is likely to sort of foreshadow the stance monetary policy in the coming months. So, again, that's that's sort of a key key point for us. Well, huge, huge developments in the markets. Thanks for bringing us all the latest developments. Conrad, appreciate your time. Thank you very much.